I recently held a live Q&A session and one of the questions was around Custom SQL. In this video, let's take a look at how we can use Custom SQL with Tableau. Let's also differentiate this from Initial SQL and we're also going to take a look at how we can use stored procedures and parameters with our Custom SQL. I've put chapters in the description below so you can easily jump to topics you need to refer to. Let's first look at the setup. For this demo, we will use SQL Server. Let's connect to SQL Server. I've created a database here called Superstore, which contains our Superstore dataset from Tableau. So if we expand Databases, we can find Superstore. If we expand Superstore, we can see three tables, orders, people, and returns. These correspond to the tabs we can find in the Superstore Excel file. Let's briefly look at the content of the orders table. We can right-click, select top 1,000 rows, and from here, we can see the records. I also created a simple stored procedure so we can demonstrate how to connect to stored procedures in Tableau. This stored procedure simply returns order details based on a product name or a part of a product name. We will look at this in more detail later on. So now let's try to connect to the SQL Server database from Tableau. In this connection screen, we can scroll down to the section that says to a server. Here we can easily see Microsoft SQL Server. However, if it's not in the initial view, we can simply click on more and search for SQL Server in the search bar. Let's now connect. Here we get prompted for the server. Right now, I only have a local server, so it's enough for me to type in, in parentheses, local. If it's not a local server, you simply need to know the connection details. It might be the fully qualified domain name or simply a server name if it's in the same network. Right beside general is another tab called initial SQL. We'll take a look at this later on because this is different from custom SQL. Let's go back to general. Right now, my authentication is also set to what's called Windows Authentication. This is also called Trusted Connection. If you click on the dropdown, there is another option to connect using a specific username or password. If this is how your database is set up, you simply need to connect using your username and password. For now, let's click on Sign In. Right now, we're connected to the Superstore database because that's what we specified in the initial connection screen. However, if we need to change the database, we can simply click on the drop-down in the database section and select the database that we want to connect to. In the sidebar, we're also going to see a couple sections, one for tables and another one for stored procedures. We'll focus on tables first using new custom SQL, and later on, we're going to take a look at stored procedures. So for now, let's drag new custom SQL and what this opens up is simply an editor where we can type in a valid SQL statement. For example, maybe let's type in select top 10 star from orders. And now let's click OK. Right now we have a custom SQL that simply pulls in 10 records from our orders table. Let's take a look at this. So under sheet one, First, let's move row ID to the top because this is a dimension, not a measure. And let's try to display this. Let's drag in our row ID and perhaps the corresponding order ID. So we can see that there are only 10 records because that's what we specified in our custom SQL. Now let's go back to our custom SQL and make some adjustments. So going back to the data source, so on the dropdown, edit custom SQL query, and this time around, let's try to insert a parameter. Instead of select top 10 star, perhaps we want to identify the number of records we want to bring in. So let's remove top 10. And in here, we're going to specify where row ID is less than or equal to. And in here, we're going to introduce a parameter. We can insert a parameter that is being passed to our live connection. So let's call this row ID parameter. Instead of a float, we're going to use integer. And for now, let's click OK. So what really happened? So this parameter has been introduced to our custom SQL, and this would have also created a parameter in our workbook. So let's click on OK first. Let's create a brand new sheet. 
we can see in the sidebar that there is a new parameter. Let's show this parameter. Right now, it's giving us one, which means there's only a single row ID if we were to display this. However, if we change the value, if we want this to be 10, then it's going to pull in 10 records from our live data source. If we change this to 20, then it's going to pull the 20 values. So this is how custom SQL works. Let's now take a look at the stored procedure. This stored procedure simply returns some order details based on a product name. If we take a look at the WHERE clause though, which is the clause that filters records, we specify WHERE product name like, and then we have a percent symbol followed by a parameter name called product name, and then followed by a percent symbol again. The percent symbol is a wildcard, which will match zero or many characters. Essentially, what we're looking for is where the product name value exists in the beginning, in the end, or somewhere in the middle of the product name. This is similar to looking for a substring. So now let's connect to this stored procedure. Let's connect to SQL Server again. Let's sign in. And from here, let's drag over the stored procedure. We can see this prompt asking us for a value for product name. Again, where does this product name come from? This product name is the parameter we've defined in the stored procedure header. What we can do in Tableau though, is instead of typing a static value, is we can create a parameter as well. On the dropdown, we can create a brand new parameter. So let's click this. Let's give this a name. Let's say product name parameter. And for example, let's start off with a value clock. And let's click OK. And OK one more time. Let's create a brand new worksheet and let's take a look at the results that are being returned to us when we pass in the value clock. So go to sheet one. Let's move row ID again to dimensions. Let's display our row IDs. It looks like we have 184 records that have clock in the product name. Let's display our product name as well. And let's extend this. Notice in here that the product name parameter we specified when we were connecting to this stored procedure has been created in Tableau. So we can simply show it as well. So right click on the parameter, show parameter. If we want to change the value, we can simply change the value, for example, refrigerator. Now we can see that the results have been changed. So for refrigerator, we have 29 records. Let's try this one more time. If we specify Apple, for example, we can see that the number of records also changed. There's 34 marks. Using the stored procedure will have a little bit of limitation though. Right now, we are connected to the database using a live connection. This is going to pose some challenges if we want to create some extracts. So let's give this a try. Let's create an extract, right click, extract our data. So just recall that extracts, the way they work is it actually pulls data from your data source into a local proprietary file in Tableau. If we decide to change the value that we're looking for, for example, let's search for refrigerator again. We are going to get this issue. It's going to tell us that the parameter is referenced by the connections custom SQL, and it will need to refresh the extract because our local file only retains the records that we had at that point in time. If we change our parameter, it means that those values are no longer in that local file. We need to re-extract them from our live database. Let us now take a look at initial SQL. How is this different from custom SQL? Let's connect to SQL Server again. And in here, let's click on the initial SQL tab. So in this editor, we can type in any SQL statements that we want to be executed the moment we connect to the database. This is different from the custom SQL query that will be used to pull data and create a new data source for us. A lot of times we're going to use initial SQL if we needed to prepare the data or set some settings in our database. You're also going to notice that there's a learn more link. Let's open this up. This article explains in depth what initial SQL is. In addition, it also provides examples of how we might decide to use initial SQL. So I'm going to simply scroll down. 
So from here, we can see that there are certain parameters that are supported in an initial SQL statement, including the Tableau server user, the Tableau app, Tableau version, the workbook name. Let's scroll down a little bit more. And here's a perfect example using Microsoft SQL Server. In SQL Server, we can do impersonation based on a username. And in here, we are seeing this execute as user, and it's going to be based on who is connecting through Tableau. Now let's take a look at another example. Let's go back to Tableau. And here, let me paste an initial snippet of code. So perhaps when we first connect to SQL Server, we might want to capture certain information about the current session. Perhaps this is something that we're going to use in the database itself. Maybe it's for logging. Notice as well that there's this insert dropdown right underneath the editor. And these are all the parameters that can be used within the initial SQL statement. And again, we can use this and pass this over to our database if we need to. So what does this initial snippet do? It's creating a local temporary table. It has four columns for username, Tableau version, Tableau app, and Tableau workbook name. And as we scroll down, the second part of this snippet is populating that temporary table. In here, we are simply inserting these environment values, Tableau server user full name, the Tableau version, the Tableau app, and the workbook name. So let's sign in. So right now, before we make any connection to the database, let's go back to Management Studio. In SQL Server, all temporary tables will sit under the system databases. So if we expand this and go to TempDB, under temporary tables, we should be able to see the temporary table we've just created when we connected from Tableau. We can't really query this table, but we can use it within the same session we had from Tableau. So let's try this out. I'm going to drag over a new custom SQL. This time, still a select top 10 star from orders. And let's just do a Cartesian product so that we can display all the values from that temporary table. Comma, pound, current, underscore, session. And let's click OK. Let's go to a worksheet. And in here, we can see some new fields. We have the Tableau app, Tableau version, Tableau workbook name, as well as the username. So if we ever needed to display this, all of these are currently saved in a temporary table in the database, and we can also display that from within Tableau. So for example, order ID. And in here, we can have the Tableau app, it's Tableau desktop, we have the Tableau version, as well as the Tableau workbook name. And that's it for custom SQL. I hope you found this session helpful, and I hope this answers the question from the live Q&A. Thank you again so much for your time, and I'll see you again next time.